Hi, this is Jeff, and this is Article of Faith number five, the uh, Holy Bible. And again, I'm going through the um, Articles of Religion and the Confession of Faith from our Book of Discipline and trying to understand these doctrines more by uh, dwelling on them for a week and uh, hopefully understanding them a little more fully. And then I'm just processing them out loud here. So here is Confession of Faith number four. We believe the Holy Bible, Old and New Testaments, reveal the Word of God so far as it is necessary for our salvation. It is to be received through the Holy Spirit as the true rule and guide for faith and practice. Whatever is not revealed in, the, in or established by the Holy Scriptures is not to be made an article of faith, nor is it to be taught as essential to salvation. So one of the first things that popped out to me is the Bible being the Word of God. And the reason that popped out was because Article of Faith number two says Jesus is the Word of God. And so um, I, I think you can make the equation that um, the best we can see Jesus and understand who he is and what he's done is through the Old and New Testaments, is, is through the Bible. And that's because Jesus is the Word of God, the Holy Bible is the Word of God. And then again, uh, that necessary for salvation, um, sometimes it's easy to get a limited view of that and just think it's justification or that born-again experience. But really, it's more than that. It's not only coming to Jesus, but it's also staying or abiding uh, with Jesus. Um, abide in Him. And all the way until you eventually graduate to heaven. So, and, and I, I do like this little piece about uh, explaining what the Holy Spirit does. But um, I think this faith and practice piece emphasizes that salvation is more than just, just a one-time experience. You go to the altar or you say a prayer or whatever it is. It's um, believing and, and continuing to believe as well as then living out your faith um, and then whatever is not to be revealed is, I like I didn't even realize it when I named this articles of faith that that would be in there but um, anyway because I, I just combined the two the confession of faith and the article of religion but um, if it's not in the Holy Scripture it is not a doctrine that you should teach as essential to living uh, and practicing your faith. Um, and I know we sometimes talk about the Wesleyan quadrilateral, um, where you have the Holy Scriptures, you have tradition, you have logic and reason, and then you have experience. But um, those aren't equally weighted. Uh, the Word of God has um, almost foundational weight. When you read through John Wesley's sermons, for example, he uses that quadrilateral, but it always starts with Scripture. Um, scripture, our experiences, our logic, our tradition should help us understand the Scripture more completely. Uh, scripture's complicated. Um, the Holy Bible is complicated. It's a very large book. It's uh, but there are other ways to help us understand what's written in Scripture. Now, the article of religion, of the sufficiency of the Holy Scriptures for salvation. The Holy Scriptures containeth all things necessary to salvation, so that whatsoever is not read therein, nor may be proved thereby, is not to be required of any man that it should be received as an article of faith or be thought requisite or necessary to salvation. So I, I want to say this almost um, emphasizes what I just said, uh, may be proved thereby being an article of faith. So if, if you can't prove it in the Bible, you shouldn't teach it as a necessary thing to believe or practice as a Christian. And in the name of the Holy Scriptures, we do understand those canonical books of the Old and New Testament, 
of those authority was never any doubt in the church. The names of the canonical books are, and this is this is oddly one of my favorite um, parts of the Articles of Religion. It just kind of reminds me of me, where here you look at it and we start out uh, great guns. Let's do everything out fully. Um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, the first book of Samuel, the second book of Samuel. So not a, no shortcuts here. You know, no first and second Samuel. It's the first book of Samuel, the second book of Samuel, the first book of Kings, the second book of Kings, the, the first book of Chronicles, the second book of Chronicles, the book of Ezra, the book of Nehemiah, the book of Esther, and it, here's where it starts sounding like me. I'll start out Great Guns, and then when you get to the end, it's like, oh man, I still got a long ways to go. I need to find a shorter way to do it. So we go the book of Job, the Psalms, the Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, or the Preacher, Cantica, or Songs of Solomon, Four, uh, four Prophets the Greater, Lamentations, Twelve Prophets the Less, all the books of the New Testament, as they are commonly received, we do receive an account can canonical. It's just funny how we go from not taking any shortcuts. Okay, let's take a little shortcut here. Four prophets. Okay, well, maybe 12 prophets and just all the rest. So I I really, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I resonated with that. I, I didn't get any new insights from it. But um, hopefully this uh, is beneficial to you. Um, I, I do store all these also on YouTube, so if you wanted to go through the whole series, um, that would be cool. All right.